I'm getting the feeling that we're probably lost now. Okay, so welcome along to today's adventure as we make our way through the Kent countryside to a little village called Betshanger, where we are hoping to find an old and abandoned mine site. Um, the Betshanger Mining, interestingly enough. It ran from 1924 to 1989, where thereafter until present day, it was left to kind of rewild and it's more of a nature park now. But what we're hoping to do is to find out if we can see any interesting remnants of the mines. Um, interestingly enough, it was the uh, first mine during the Second World War to actually go on strike, which is not surprising really, considering that uh, when the mine opened in 1924, it was actually founded by a group of blacklisted miners throughout the country. And, and basically they had been blacklisted through every mine site in England and then came down to Betshanger to open up their own one. So I think we should go ahead and see what we can find today. Hopefully it's a good one. Okay, so we've actually made it here to the site and it looks like that we've got to make our way over to just over there by that building there. It looks like that's where the entrance is. So let's uh, go ahead and make our way over there, shall we? Well, we found the entrance. It wasn't very uh, well signposted, but uh, we did find it in the end. I suppose we just go on through, don't we? Right, judging by the map, we're here. And uh, we'd like to make our way down this road to either to the left here or to the right. We don't know what either one looks like. So we're just gonna follow this road down and then kind of go from there where we can have a little nose round. Let's, let's go do that, shall we? Come on. So I've just found out that this site is actually over 250 acres, which is actually pretty big, really, for England's standards. I mean, get a look at this view. Have a look at that. The vast expanse, Kentish countryside. Ooh. And we're gonna walk it all today. Although, apparently you can hire e-bikes, which sounds quite appealing in this weather because today's supposed to be one of the hottest days of the year, it's reaching temperatures of nearly 30 degrees Celsius, which is a lot. But having got three quarters of the way to where we need to go, we've suddenly realized the time. It's uh, lunchtime. So we did an about turn. We're now making our way down to the nearest restaurant, which, as I'm told, is actually quite nice. But we'll see. Oh well, not a wasted journey. It just means we get to enjoy it for the second time walking back again. Just having ordered lunch, I've just spotted, as I went to sit down, a cool little place just over there that sells uh, coffee and ice cream. And I think I shall be using that a little later to cool down because at the moment this heat is pretty hot so we'll have to indulge in a nice ice cream that way and a coffee yeah we'll come back to that later once we've had my lunch wow look at that i know i ordered the uh the mining bun but uh that's looks like it's just come out of the the shaft tent number two trying to find some interesting bits we've now been fed and watered we shall try again to see if we can find anything now it's a beautiful day but it's a bit windy which is quite nice because that sun is beating down some mega mega heat onwards and upwards just another 10 miles to go so should we make our, our way to the viewing platform? What do you reckon? Yeah, which is down that way. Okay, this looks promising. That we're seeing all these signs, <laughs> but for all intents and purposes, it does look like we've taken a wrong turn. But all in good faith. I wonder what's down in there. I wonder if there's a, an abandoned shaft 
in there. I'm not, I'm not about to go in there and find out way too many creepy crawly things for me and fly buzzy things. Is this our platform? Yeah, it's closed. is there we go it's closed let's go back home that's it i've had enough to the pond. oh we can get to the pond from here yeah why is this closed I'm so only one way to find out amanda yes walk down oh yeah because you know i'm a fan of those <laughs> You did like them in Mexico. I think you edited out me on the one in Mexico. Far too many expletives for a PG-13 movie there. Okay, on to, is it the Tenant Pond? Yes. Okay, I wonder why it's called the Tenant Pond. Maybe there was a village there and that's where the miners lived. There would have then been tenants of the property. So do you think this was a, a bit like Chernobyl? where the workers would work in the mines and just on the outskirts you'd have all the miners' families. Well, yeah, I mean, they didn't really have the ability to travel too far to work in the 1920s. So they would have needed to live in nearby villages after a long day down the tunnel, uh, down in the uh, mine. They didn't want to have to go too far to go home. Did it have cars to get them to and from? Well, Certainly didn't earn the money to just keep a car. I suppose there's always the added thing that coal would never have a nuclear fallout. Well, yeah, they weren't in the danger of uh, quite those in uh, Chernobyl, although there was always the danger of a uh, mine collapsing. Or is it called smoker's lung or whatever it's called? Yeah, there's Black that lung. as well, yeah. Spotted dick lung. Health, health issue, isn't it? Okay. Right, I don't think it's down there. It could be. Look at that. I know we're talking about miners having somewhere to live, but I don't think these 2013 model static homes was available in 1924. It's just a guess. Okay, let's go to the pond. So I've come a little bit of a crossroads here, quite, quite literally and uh, figuratively. As you can see, just there is our way to the pond. It's closed off the rickety cricket bridge. I'm not wanting to trust it. So uh, Amanda's decided to go and have a little venture and look. It's going to be the hero of the day. But I've got lost in worse places. I mean, check a load of that view out there. see for miles as you can see by the sign we've made it to the pond it says uh, danger deep water and we've just got to this pond we've uh, seen a sign let's have a little look shall we right I don't know how well you're picking that up so I'm just gonna read it to you so since 1950 over half of the UK's pond have been lost due to drainage schemes, pollution, or simply disuse. Small shallow ponds or something water bodies that shrink and expand throughout the year play a host to many of Britain's amphibians, such as the smooth newt and even the much rarer grey crested newt, which is now a protected species in the UK. So, yeah. As you can see, Hopefully I don't drown in it. I think they went a bit overkill with the sign. Well, that's a little disappointing. That is the great tenant pond. Puddle. Yeah, puddle. Back we go. Well, all is not lost. We have found some water. It's actually called Falmead Lake. And it looks really pretty, actually. It's almost like a turquoise, isn't it? Yeah, 
I can't see no wildlife. Got some lovely dragonflies about. They're very majestic looking. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's time we have like a five minute sit down here. This is lovely. Come have a sit down with us, rest your bones. Well, that was uh, nice and restful. What we did actually work out was, on one of the notice boards, is that this little lake here was the actual entrance to mine shaft number two, which kind of makes sense really, because the, the workers would come in from the entrance over there and they would follow it around and then go through down into the shaft that way. So we found the entrance to mine shaft number two. Let's see if we can find number one. I've got to say, it looks better as a lake though, it's beautiful. just come across something really interesting it's a, a general information board on this site and uh, it turns out Kent didn't realize it had any coal until 1890 and it was discovered by accident when they were actually trying to dig a tunnel to go from Dover to Calais um, sorry about that there's a fly in my face but having got down what was it 2,000 feet the shaft went yeah, something like that. 2,000 feet. It took them from 1924 and they didn't bring coal up to the ground till 1927, which is a, an epic amount of time, really. It's amazing. 1,500 miners came down from all different sites to this colliery and uh, they brought their families with them kind of it was a, a huge influx at the time of workforce so as a result new villages were kind of built and they, they one of them uh, is Elvington you've got um, Hurston and uh, Aylesbury it's amazing really I think 1500 people came down here start working and uh, their shifts would start at 20 past 6 in the morning but they were enforced at 10 to 6 in the morning to be starting work getting dressed in all their gear and equipment and, uh, I read somewhere that one of the lights weighed seven pound in weight so they'd have to suit up in very heavy clothing and then take their little electric lantern that weighed seven pound and then go down 2,000 feet to where the coal face was. You couldn't get away with that nowadays, could you? Being forced to work unpaid half an hour just to suit and boot up. And get to the coal face. Yeah. Which Madness. 2,000 feet down and two kilometres across to the actual coal face. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it's just amazing that it was found by accident. Didn't even realise that there was coal in this area. And as a result, how many was it? Pop -pop. Nine collieries were, were constructed in Kent. So as a result of accidentally finding some, trying to dig from Dover to Calais, nine more were constructed in the areas of Kent, providing so much work to this coastal area throughout the years has really suffered through the workforce and lack of available work so most men were expected to don on a pair of dungarees get your cap on your seven pound electric light go down to hell really i just got myself a coffee from this beautiful little stand the size of it it's tiny about the same size as my shoe. Amazing. I don't know how the girl gets in it. But uh, beautiful coffee either way. Oh, let's have a little sit down. That was an epic walk we just did there. Good eight miler. We've had our caffeine fix. Now we just need a nice refreshing cold Mr. Whippy. 
before we go in search of mine shaft number one. I'll bury this quick start of melt. Mine shaft number one down here? Possibly. Quite narrow. Got in there. It's very warm in here, isn't it? Yeah. Clock still works. I like that feature. Definitely not the entrance to mine shaft number one. Okay. Well, we're hopeful. The others we mean that on such a nice peaceful walk that we've got here we had the uh, rather large family of large screaming children that they weren't getting their own way following us that's the one they were following us but 220 acres of walk land that they can do but oh no they had to be right up our chuff so our quiet walk no, that wasn't. Oh, single track down there. That's the mountain bike Yeah. Across. This could be interesting. Go down here. Just been told. Uh, by a reliable source that someone works here. Down there is the entrance to mine shaft number one. However, we can't, there's not an official walkway down there. So we need to find a way of perhaps going around to see if we can find it. We, we must find it, we've got to. I've got an idea. I'm gonna see if I can get Droney out. Yeah, we'll do that. work out as planned taking old droney through the woods it started to get a bit narrow there so i have to scrap that Perhaps go back to the drawing board and think of something else now we can try and tactically approach shaft number one wow you need to have a little look at this view come on look over there I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but that's one hell of a view out to see. Yeah, in the background, you've got Deal and Deal Castle, and uh, just further on, you start to get the sea. Look at that. Amazing. Well, this is a familiar sight. Lake Placid. So we've definitely come full circle on this one. Let's have a little look at the map to see where we are. Okay. So from what I've been told, just here is entrance number two, which would make sense if we have shaft number one there. And it was round here that I got old Droney out. I don't think we're going to be able to find a way to get in there today. Uh, all these black lines here is just for mountain bikes. So, and the blue line you'd think is a river. It's not. It's a a trial bike, a blue trial, entry level. I wonder if you can take the old electric ones across there. I think I'm. 
fit enough to press the button on the electric bike. I don't think I'm quite ready for the tour of Bet's Hangar on a mountain bike today. Or any other day to be honest with you. It looks like we've probably failed trying to find shaft number one today. Um, some good news though. I found out that they've got a museum so I think it'd be a good idea to do a part two. Perhaps we'll go around the museum see if we can find it that way. See what interesting bits are on there. But yeah that'll be on part two of this video. I think now that all that leaves us is to do is to start making our way back to the car. Put some after sun on because my skin is starting to feel a bit prickly. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in part two of the video. Get a of this view though. Look at it, it goes on for miles. You can't get bored of that now, can you?